Hey guys, it's Gotea here. Before the video begins, I just want to apologize to all of you that I haven't uploaded anything for over a week now. I was in the process of moving as well as getting my internet up, which was a headache and a half, as well as some other uh, personal stuff that prevented me from uploading regularly. However, now everything is perfectly fine, and I am able to finally start uploading again, either every day or every other day, I will let you guys know for sure. But yeah, this will not happen again without preparations and also notifying all of you guys. It isn't fair to you, and I, I owe it to you. But without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's get into this video. I was deployed in Iraq in 2004. A few months into our tour, my friend gets two weeks leave. He was assigned as a gunner on my lieutenant's Humvee. A couple of hours before we go on mission, the lieutenant asked me if I'd like to fill in for my friend to be his gunner. I had a bad habit of running my mouth, and I didn't think spending a lot of time with the lieutenant was a good idea, so I declined, saying, I would, sir, but... I hear your driver is so bad that he voids my life insurance policy and my folks would really need the money. He laughed and walked away. That mission, his vehicle was hit by an IED, and the blast killed the gunner, a special operations guy from HQ who volunteered for the mission. Still kind of freaks me out. So I served in the Swiss Army in the 90s. We're all camping somewhere in the Alps in November. This was the first snowfall of the year. And for some reason I will never understand, we had to have fully armed guards 24-7, even if we were not on a tactical training site, but rather on a skill training site, because everyone knows just how dangerous the Swiss Alps can get. At around 3 a.m. we hear shouting, then automatic gunfire. And the next thing I know, my NCO was shouting medic, who I was, and I ran out to see a fairly large puddle of blood in the snow. Shocked, I start looking around for a patient, but can never find one. Later on, I get told what exactly had happened. So what had happened was that two conscripted soldiers were standing guard. One decides he has to take a piss, but when he returns, the other soldier is standing guard, butt-ass naked, with only his knife and his rifle. The guy ends up taking the knife and cuts himself in the arm, and then empties his entire magazine up into the air and runs off into the snowy night. A massive search operation was commenced immediately, but we never found him, which does not mean a lot. I suspect that this guy was a deserter and just wanted to put on a show before he left. But anyways, this was one of the strangest things that happened to me in my military career. I was an aeronautics technician returning to the hangar from lunch on the 1st of May, 1980, at Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point, North Carolina, only to see a Harrier jet bouncing across the runway towards us. It entered the partially closed hangar doors, peeling them back like a banana and hitting a few A-4 Seahawks on the way to the other side of the hangar where it created another hole in the hangar doors. It came to rest in the parking lot and exploded into a big fireball, taking a few dozen cars with it. I ran into the hangar to see if any casualties were present, only to find lots of plane damage and a sprinkler system drenching the entire area. Once the fire was put out in the parking lot, all that was left of the pilot was his helmet containing his head in the cockpit. No other casualties or injuries were ever reported. This was in the early days of the U.S. adopting that Harrier jet and crashes were happening on a monthly basis. Since my particular aeronautics gear consisted of all of the classified equipment on the planes, I was often called out to salvage or recover any classified or cryptography equipment. I've seen more crashes and horrific sights than I care to admit. There is a reason that the marine pilots refer to Harriers as the Widowmakers. My uncle was a World War II veteran. He served in the Pacific and was stationed on a cruiser. During some battle, I forgot the exact name, the ship he was stationed on was hit by a torpedo. 
He said that the ship fell apart from underneath his feet, and that his friends and crew members were screaming and dying around him. Fortunately, he was rescued a couple hours later. From what my grandma says, he's never been the same since. He gets frightened any time he hears a loud noise, and he is very, very quiet. War can fuck you up. My nephew was in Iraq. He was a Bradley gunner slash driver, doing a sweep in the city while his buddy is filming it all on his phone. They turn at an intersection and see a little kid around six or seven years old, just standing there looking at them. My nephew waves at him, and the kid takes his hand out of his pocket and pitches a grenade at the Bradley. They all duck and cover, and the grenade bounces off the hull right back to the kid, leaving a red, greasy spot on the sidewalk. It was a pretty fucked up video I saw when he was on leave months later. So the other story is my son-in-law. He was at his forward operating base in Afghanistan, where there was some shelling from mortars the day before, but they had ended up cleaning up all the insurgents, or so they thought. He went to the latrine and they sounded the alarms and the shelling started up once more. The first place hit was a stall right next to his, and the rest of the building fell out around him. Luckily he was okay and not hurt in the rubble. He does have some PTSD and anger issues now that he is home. We were outside throwing the football and he backed up far to catch a pass and ended up stepping on a beer bottle and breaking it. He just bursted into tears and had to sit on the porch for about several minutes. Shit, I don't think we thank our service people enough. My uncle fought in Vietnam and has told me lots of crazy stories about his time there. Who knows how many of them are actually true. Regardless, my favorite story that he told me was during basic training. He broke his ankle while running. His superior didn't really believe that it was broken, so he had to walk back to base carrying his pack. Later, he was told to wait outside for the bus to the hospital. What had actually picked him up was a dump truck that showed up and told him to climb in the back. Somehow, he managed to do that with a broken ankle. In the back of the dump truck were a bunch of other mildly injured soldiers, along with a few sick ones. When they got to the military hospital, the driver simply pulled the dump truck's dump lever and dumped them all out on the ground, then just drove off. I personally can't really believe it, but it's a great story nonetheless. Hey guys, it's Gote here. I wanted to say thank you very much for listening to this video, and I wanted to keep it short and sweet for you guys. I know I've been gone for a while, and I just wanted to ease back into things. So. If any of you have any stories of your own, please do not hesitate to send me them via my personal email linked in the description below, and I'll be sure to include them in a future video. Thank you again, and I'll see you mates in the next episode.